Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Ryan, Ryan, uh, Ryan Anderson. And you usually go by your nickname, right? Pesci. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got three names. I was born Rashid Marini, uh, Rashid Abofado Marini, and uh, nickname Pesci. And uh, I changed my name, age 19, to Ryan Anderson. Yeah. So I've got di- different identities. Uh but it's I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Jump between them all. It's right, different. Okay. Yeah. Um. So what would you pre- what do you like me to call you? What should I call you? Let's be professional here, and we'll go with Ryan. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, buddy. Great. Good on you. <laughs> so yeah, I've only had two. I feel a bit left out, right? I've only been David Anthony Flower and Simon Jonathan Ben. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm missing one, right? Um. <laughs> it's uh. It, it's no wonder that we get like a bit confused about identity isn't it like when we've had at least two names yeah just yeah you, you struggle where you fit in um being when it's pesci you're always a bubbly uh mad party animal <laughs> and you expect i was expected that and i still am <laughs> yeah um, and then sometimes you can be sometimes i can be sensible and mature um, so I think it's just went with age, really. Um, I've kind of matured a bit, but I've still got a bit. Yeah. Uh, the old in me. Yeah. Um, but you're still and, a uh, youngster, right? How how old are you, right? I'm thirty three, but yeah. I feel I feel like the granddad. Uh, but at the same time, I do feel like I'm sixteen at heart as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to just uh live life to the full and. Uh, come across in a in a positive way because I'm a positive guy and uh yeah just try and um smash this thing called life eh? yeah 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 so before we started recording you you said that you were kind of still in the midst of um uh educating yourself yes so what what sort of things are you focusing on because you uh, just for the for the listeners um uh, Ryan's told his story on quite a few podcasts and we're not going to dive t- uh, deep into that. Um, I'm going to put some links on the show notes if you want to check him out. But um, just for uh, brevity, you were like, were you 17, 18 when you found out you were an adoptee? Was around that yeah. time? Yeah, just before my 18th. It's called an LDA, Late yeah. Discovery Adoptee. Yeah, yeah. Um, and... Uh, so it, since then you've been doing you've gone through different phases and now you're focusing on uh, educating yourself so what what is it that you're focusing on in your uh, education uh, the main thing that we all talk about is mental health um basically talking um and try, um I really like to try and inspire people and um, I also like to help people, and um, the the only way the way the way I like to do it is speaking to others, hearing their stories, telling mine, and trying to make sure that uh, every, uh, the conversations I have with people they're left with a uplifting attitude, and I've had a positive effect, and um, help those who are no who are a bit low, just get them feeling that little bit better. Yeah. So a, a mentor um, of mine says people will always, who's a speaker, right? Um, will, he says is that people will always forget um, what, you, what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. Something like that. They remember yeah, how you made you feel, yeah. Yeah, I've, um, I like my quotes. I, I like motivational videos. Um, I like uh, hearing podcasts. And um, so that that can change my attitude when I'm feeling low because I can be very grumpy, um, and then something just switches in me, uh, and I'm back in a good attitude. Yeah. And um, once I can try and educate myself, I can try and I call it going into the red. I don't like when you're really really low. You're down in the dumps. You're in the red. I like bringing people out the red, getting them to amber, um, and then work on yourself to try and get to the green. Yeah. Um and uh, yeah, just um 
uh, some quotes really stick with me. Um, I share them a lot on social media, and some people message the odd person says, "I needed to hear that that day," and um, sometimes that even me reading it, I need to hear that. It's it's uh, something clicks for you, and um, yeah, each person is different, but um, I like try to spread a message to try and help people. Yeah. So, what's your um, what's your favorite or some of your favorite quotes? There was um, one quote from, uh, I don't know who it was from. It says, um, it takes a million matches to make a tree, but it only takes one match uh, to burn them all. And um, Or sorry, sorry it's when a bird flies, um, oh, I can't have actually, <laughs> it's, my head went there. Um oh. It's something to do like time and circumstances can change at any time. So don't devalue anyone. And it's like the bird well birds flies, it eats the ants, and when it dies, ants eats the birds. So it kind of says it's a position in life where um your circumstances will change. So don't um even when things are going amazing for you, don't look down on anyone. And um if your position your your position is like down in the dumps, um Things can change within the day, week, month, a year, um, and I'm always always trying to think positive. Yeah. Um, so, in in the kind of like adoptee circles, we hear. I think we. Well, my opinion is we hear far more about trauma than we than we hear about mindset or or, or attitude. Would you say that? Do you, is, would you say? Yeah, that? there's there's a lot of people who have uh, suffered from trauma, myself included. And um, it's it's uh, they've got they're they're hurting. We're all hurting, and we're all trying to heal. And um, some adoptees are venting, and um, some adoptees are just trying to uh, um, basically so what trying to get themselves. Just change their mindset and just try and tackle life full on. Yeah. Some of them don't. Some of them don't have the strength as of yet. I try and just be mindful of everyone. Um, I try and create hope uh, with everyone. Um, if someone's uh, not ready to ta- face the world, tackle the problems, understand, and for uh, and then hats off to those who are um trying to make a difference and um trying to move forward in life positive, in a yeah. positive manner. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I, I understand. The adoptees were, some some of us are angry, um, and I I completely understand. I was angry at one point. Um, some of the people don't want to talk, and um, I was I was in that position as well. And uh, now I'm trying to uh, try to do a different approach. Yeah. And... Um, it's working so far. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a working process. Uh, working progress. I'm not perfect, but uh, I'm doing my best, and that's all yeah. you can ask. Yeah. So what what's helped you put that anger behind you? Um, just the the lifestyle I lived. It was I was getting um damaging my body, damaging my mind, and then you nearly I always like in a state of fear as if I'm going to die, and um. Just the, the quote, like, life's too short. And um, tr- tr- uh, yeah, just to try and approach each situation that we're not, we're not anger. And, um, yeah, I'm um, doing, learning, going to loads of workshops, um, d- doing loads of events, going to many support groups and talking more. Yeah. Um, when before, I wouldn't talk. And now... I can um, I enjoy having lots of conversations with people. I'm interested in their life, dig deep. I like to hear the bad points, and also like to hear the, po- the positive points. And um, yeah, just trying to uh, yeah, give an uplifting feeling to everyone. Yeah. So you you were you were quieter when you were angry. Is that what you were saying? And now you're yeah. more open that the the anger's dissipated a bit. Or uh, is there any particular moment that comes to to mind, Ryan, when when um, 
that change for you or was it like more, more like a gradual process that you that, that there are no moments that stick out yeah um, going back to my story i found i found out age 18 and then but the main point was i kept my adoption secret for 12 years and um i remember the timeline of um and that was eating me up and then i told i, I finally told the doctors and the doc, I had an hour chat with the doctor. Then I spoke to a therapist, and each, and then I joined. Uh, I opened up on Reddit, but I wanted to be anonymous. Anonymous, and then I joined groups, and I wouldn't speak in the groups. And then I started to interact, and I joined more and more, um, more and more uh, Zooms and face to face meetings, and then became more confident in speaking. So that's my gradual process of, uh, of um, of talking and opening up. And then I told my friends face to face, and now I've just became this open character who can speak to my best friend and also speak to a stranger on the street, and um, quite a lot of people feel comfortable talking to me, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're a nice guy, you know. Um... <laughs> Try to be. Oh. And also, the thing is like taking compliments. Well, I don't know if anyone else struggles with that. Um, I get told all the time when I'm amazing, and then. And I'm only, only human and I do a lot of things wrong. So ever since I came out with my story, whenever I do something wrong, I'm getting, uh, I feel guilty. And then I'm also getting highlighted. You've done this wrong. So, um, and I, I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, but I'll uh, be uh, hold, uh, hold my hands up. And uh, whenever I try and make a mistake, I'll try and fix it. And that's what I think yeah. we should all do. Um, so do you still find it tough to take compliments? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Um, but it's, it's still nice to hear it. And, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, maybe that's something I need to work on as well. Um, and then obviously it's just uh, what we should all do, try and uh, work on ourselves to, to love ourselves and be happy and stable and um and mainly just enjoy enjoy life really have a laugh yeah um and uh be happy yeah i've, I've got a little story that i often tell when it comes to uh, taking compliments um mm -hmm. and uh it, it, it it's it's a, it's a kind of a trivial story but sometimes it's easier to see the the big stuff in trivial example, right? So it was about 12 years ago. So we were on holiday and um, we'd been chatting to some, we were in Turkey. We'd been chatting to some people at, uh, at lunchtime. And then we saw them again in the evening in the, the hotel, um, the, the, the bar, which was around the hotel pool. And um, this lady had a really lovely color dress on, right? And, and I said, oh, I, I love the color of your dress. Um, and she was like, she looked at me like I was taking the Mickey out, of me, right? And I'm going, no, no, I, I really love that colour. I, I really love that colour. I years ago I used to wear a polo shirt that colour, and I really, and I really loved it, and it's bringing me back. But she looked at me like I was, um, like I was absolutely mad for giving her a, um, a giving her a compliment. She just couldn't take it, right? Now. I, I think that we sometimes if we are uh, you know, feeling low self-esteem, then we're feeling so rubbishy that we, we, we can't take compliments from other people because they kind of, um, they contrast, there's, there's, too much, there's too much of a mismatch between yeah. how we feel about ourselves and how they feel about us. So um, I remember having this girlfriend uh, 30 odd years ago and she, ha she put me on a, a pedestal and I just couldn't, I just couldn't take it. I couldn't, I, I couldn't take her being so nice and complimentary to me. It's just, um, there was too much of a clash between what she said and how I felt. Does, does that, Bring, can you can you see anything? Have you, have you got any? Have you got any other uh, similar examples? Anything come to your mind, Ryan? With that sort yeah. of 
Um, yeah, so when I'm previous, I've not been low in a, a long time, but well, I have actually, but um, I have my adopted mother to thank. My mother's my rock, she tries, she doesn't understand mental health, she's age 72, and uh, she's dealt with my relentless negativity. And as much as my mum's, uh, I, and I'll when I help people, I like to go in, grab them by the scruff of the neck and sit or sit them down, cuddle them, uh, not physically, but like make sure that they get they get that bit they get better and give all a hundred percent effort. And when my mum not being in the same city for me, I get frustrated that um even though she says some positive stuff to try and get me feeling a bit better, I'm like it's not enough, it's not enough. When we, and then because she keeps going on, she's because I push her away and she's still standing. Eventually, I give in and I do start to get better. And then she's um, she's really excited and happy that her son's back. And um, yeah, this it, you have to approach each person differently if they're in a low mood, a low mood. Um, and um, yeah, sometimes compliments can be taken wrong. And um, and so, but sometimes in the opposite effect, like saying something positive can actually uplift someone. So, so that's what that's what I try and do. Um, so are you, and, sorry, Ryan, um, to talk over you there. Um, are you saying that your your mum perseveres with you yeah, relentlessly? I I I give her so many options to um to walk away. And she doesn't, and that's um what I do with a lot of relationships where you you kind of, it's like a self sabotage, and um it's probably not a good technique to use, but um something that I'm working on. Just for instance, any failed uh, or breakdown in friendships, relationships, I look back and I go. Um, I could have acted a bit better there, and some of that. Uh, but that wasn't my mindset then. Um, but and if I had that conversation now, I would have been a lot calmer. So it's all it's always trying to just remain calm, have peace, and um, just kind of deal with uh, situations better. Um, which I'm doing. I feel like I'm doing now, and uh, you become a better person from it. Yeah. So, um, what, what what do you think helps us develop that self awareness? Just educating ourselves, um, de- uh, addressing what's going on, um, doing the stuff that you love, that uh, um, keeping healthy, physically, mentally, um, yep, and, uh, and also having that uh, uh, all round balance, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so just and then obviously we need to, you need to have the people around you, the support. Yeah. For me, I, I think um, it's it's also about like a self reflection thing. Mm-hmm. So I told that story about the the woman in in Turkey that wouldn't accept the compliment about the color of her dress, uh, and. Um, I also talked about me with this girl putting, put this girl had me on a, a, a pedestal and, um, and, and I couldn't accept the, I couldn't accept the compliment. So I, it was, it was just over, it was too much for me. Right. So I, I think there's also that self-reflection piece where we can look back uh, at a, at a conversation and look back on at times on, on in our lives when we've, when we've struggled to take some uh, some some compliments uh, f- from others, or we have somehow tried to push people away, and 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 just become just reflect on them a, l- a little bit, you know. Um, the other thing that came to mind is you talked about your your mum's relentlessness. Uh, we see. There's, there's quite a lot of um, trashing of adoptive parents on social media, isn't there? Especially yeah. in groups. 
Mm-hmm. I've um, I've not got like my mother uh, a chuck back in her face all the time that what you told me at eighteen this this has damaged me, um, and she constantly rel- relentlessly apologizes for that, and um, but this is when things are going bad with like or even I'm having one of my what we call mental health uh, mental health days a down day, um. And um, yeah, I constantly chuck that back. And my, my adopted dad, he hasn't the best been the best father, even to his biological kids. Um, but what I do like to stress is, um, it only takes one parent, or even someone, uh, positive in your life to even, uh, keep you going, and um, even like some not everyone, uh, not all of us have got the perfect families. And um, I'm I'm very lucky um to have my adopted mum because she's been fantastic, and um she's made me who I am. And um, my adopted father, he's trying. Um, they've not been the worst, but definitely not been the best. Um, and some people have had worse experiences, and and even some non-adopted people have had. They've not got the parents there for them, but if you've not got the parents there for them, then you might have a a brother there for you. Or if you've not got your brother, you might have an uncle. If you don't have an uncle, you might have a friend. And then if you've not got a friend, then the support groups out there. Um, but you need to be. Well, you don't need to be. It's it's it's, it's good to try and approach that when you are trying to heal, not when you are um upset and angry, and um. I just hope that the um, emotions pass because it's um, building up. We all do it, or we all, I'm guessing we all have done it in the past. Do you know, you build out a lot of anger inside you and then you just explode. Um, I'm trying not to try not to do that anymore. So I like trying to, uh, if there's an issue with someone, try and address it, resolve it, and uh, and come to an understanding. Um, some people don't like to address it. Um, and it, it's, it's very, it's very, very difficult to address it. It's awkward. It's uh, it's uncomfortable. But um, I'm some of the books and podcasts I'm reading. Like you try and put yourself in uncomfortable situations, and uh, that's where you grow. And um, I'm trying that. Yeah, um, I'm just. I always say that I'm winging it. So. <laughs> uh, it is that's what I'm doing. Yeah. What does healing mean to you, Ryan? Healing just means uh being happy. Um being I'll say happy most of the time, because you're not gonna be happy all the time, most of the time. Um and yeah, it's not angry anymore, peaceful. Um I feel a bit silly before, uh not remembering that quote. Um I always try and I think I should have remembered that. So I've just got the quote here. It's about time and karma. It says, when a bird is alive, it, eat ant, it eats ants. When the bird dies, ants eat, ants eat it. One tree can make a million matches, but only one matchstick is required to burn, uh, to burn a million trees. So your circumstances can change at any time. So don't devalue or hurt anyone in life. You may be powerful today, but time is more powerful than you. So be good and do good. That's that was my number one phrase that I've remembered. Uh, yeah. I should have should have knew that off by heart, but <laughs> um, yeah. I'll, I'll get that. I'll get that in there, and then that's what sticks with me. Yeah. And um, people always remember most people that I um, good memories with me. And um, even I start I try and do that as well with others, like even people that I don't speak to. There was times where there were. Where, we had fantastic memories together, and then we people grow each other, don't they? Some do, and then people can come in and out your life, and then it's learning to be okay with that. Yeah. The uh, the quote that's coming to my mind as you were talking earlier on was um, a Zig Ziglar quote, which is your uh, your attitude determines your altitude. Have you heard that? Mm-hmm. Attitude determines your altitude. So why 
I mean, I mentioned this earlier on. Why why do you think we don't see this sort of stuff much in 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 um, adoption groups? We don't we don't hear talk about mindset or beliefs or anything like that. Or is it is it just me? I'm just not in the right groups. Uh, there's no, um, there's loads lots of groups out there. I'm making it my mission to see what's out there available because if some people are really hurt. There's no, there's no point in talking uh, or like uh, a different stage to you in your healing process. There's no point in talking about mind uh, mindset um, until they're ready. So we all, it's like grieving. We all have to go through stages, and every, each stage is different for everyone. And um, yeah, with me, I'm doing as much as I can, uh, speaking on podcasts, doing any media coverage, doing any blogs, um, speaking to anyone who wants to hear my story. Um, I go to as many adoption focus groups. Um, I've started. I'm on a waiting list for NHS for um counselling. And um, yeah, there's lots of workshops I'm doing, and um, taking part in a film, taking part in a play. I don't know if this is my characteristics. I love to do get on the camera, <laughs> um, but uh. That to me makes me feel like I'm doing something, which and then and also mainly is being a positive person or being polite, kind to those around you, um, because there's there's no point in just preaching it, um, on camera and podcasts and not doing it in real life, uh, and doing and doing it to the ones close to you. Yeah. And I always mention, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'm still learning. Yeah, I'm educating myself, so I'm not perfect, but none of us are. Here's one. Here's a quote. One of my favourite quotes that kind of sums up what you were just saying. Then, so you said, um, um, you know, don't be it, don't preach it. I think it's kind of the summary of what you said. Um, would that be about right? Be it, don't um, preach it. No, it's like don't. Preach it if you're not doing it yourself. Um, it's, I'm happy with if we all preached being uh, doing good. Um, if, we, if we all try to be the best versions of ourselves, the world would be a better place. Yeah. And so that, that my point is uh, support, being supportive of anyone. Don't bring anyone down. You see a lot of trolling on social media. Um, you see maybe some tro- uh, people in real life negativity. A conflict. I try and eliminate conflict, um, and then if it does occur, you try and uh, deal with it. Um, yeah. move on. It's, it's um, where do you really get yourself being angry all the time? Um, and my, when I when I'm low, I'm I, when I get angry and I'm low. Um, my mom, my mom says stop blaming everyone and. That annoyed me, but maybe she was right. And uh, sometimes it's not what you want to hear because your temper's at a hundred. But um, this the a uh, uh, thing I just learned today in a <clears throat> workshop was like a sandwich effect. You say something positive, then you go into the negative about it, and you finish on the positive. So. You try, um, yeah, you're just trying to. There's always a positive outcome, but it's in the times it can be very difficult to find, but you just need to speak to the right people, yeah, and then they'll bring the positive out of you, yeah. So, what, what do you think helps us be the best version of ourselves? Um, having the right people around you, you're in an environment where it's chaos, uh. Um, the vibes, good vibes, um, and doing the stuff that you like, you love, really, whether it's fitness, whether it's holidays, walks, uh, interacting with people, um, and also your your time alone. Yeah, and uh, not doing not doing too much so you don't crash, and not um doing nothing where you feel useless but um, yeah, 
I don't, I don't like to put pressure on any people because some the days where I've just been like my goal of the day is just to eat and just to just to rest. And it's very difficult for me when I'm a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> but um I feel I feel in a good good yeah. place at the moment. It's always I always don't like to say I feel like in a good place because there's loads of stuff going on in my mind, but I'm I'm managing it. And so this is this is like accepting that uh, compliment. Oh, um, when if we did actually t start, try to talk to ourselves, like yes, I am in a good place, because you can't can always feel grateful, mindful, that like even just alive. Um, com and then you could compare yourself to other situations, even though we always compare to. I wish we were a millionaire with uh, traveling the world. And then you remember that there's lots of poverty, so we're always in the middle. And um, yeah, some yeah, sometimes it uh, can get you down. And then another, there's lots another, of unhappy millionaires. Exactly. Yeah. Not even about money financially. Um, even a family, friends. Um, it's. It's uh, and it's it's up to you to try and change that. Yeah. So and, where, do you um, think, where do you think happiness comes from for you? For you, Ryan? Um, talking, speaking to people, traveling, um, uh, uh, smiling, <laughs> having a having a laugh, um, just doing. For me, I'm like live life on the edge type of guy. Um, and then sometimes I just wish I was just a uh, um, your average family man <laughs> um, and settled. Um, I'm uh, I feel like I'm a free spirit. Um, one minute I'm um, just uh, I'm on a chill day, and the next minute I'll I, lo I always do things last minute, spontaneous, and um, yeah, though you get uh, there is people who are perfectly happy living the family life and um, there's people who are perfectly happy, happy traveling the world um, and there's people who are sad in both situations as well but um, I, let, I find my happiness by helping others um, because I've, I've been down in the dumps and um, if I, I feel I can help others so that's my duty to do that yeah. it, to the best of my ability and what are the the messages that you want to land for them, the people that you're helping? It's, um, just basically find your balance in life. Um, do obviously you know the stuff you're doing wrong, and you know the stuff you could be doing. So, um, it's hard to spread spread like a general message because each person is yeah. different. Um, well, we don't we don't always know what we're doing wrong. Right? That, that was yeah. trying when I, where I was trying to get to with the self reflection thing in in terms of like looking back on uh, looking back on stuff and seeing where uh, where we found it tricky to um, accept compliments, for example, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 that self reflection hopefully would bring in an awareness uh, mm -hmm. of uh, you know I, I mean wrong is a big word but you know it's not. It's not particularly helpful, is it, to yeah. have a downer, a downer on our uh, ourselves? But if we if we don't know, we, um, another one of my favourite quotes from a mentor of mine is: "It's hard to see the picture when we're in the frame." Right. So mm -hmm. this idea, the idea is that we're um, recognizing that uh, it, self awareness is tough, but we're we're saying. It, it, it's where the the greatest change comes from when we look at something that we're uh, doing or not doing and we think well and until we know that there's something that we want to change we don't change it mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah yeah spot on um thinking about the question you said is um choose peace over conflict 
um, and that can go for something that happens in the future or even stuff in the past where um, I'm all about reconnecting people and um, you know what, no bad vibes out there. And uh, yeah, I just, I believe people can change and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, not even to say that was that as bad in the past, but I want to try and change for the better. Yeah. What What do you think drives change? How do you think we change? Um, inspiring people, someone to look up to. I didn't start doing this until I watched podcasts, seen other people doing it. So you what? When I came out with my story, it's like a ripple effect. And every meeting I go, I steal phrases of what they said, and um, then I want to spread that message. And um, if my message is to try and um, look at the trauma I've been through, but I'm thriving, as you'd say in your podcast, I'm thriving. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's uh, that gives me strength to know um that I'm I'm a survivor and um I'm just spreading the message that um got someone came up to me, one of my friends, and said, um Pesha used to be the man and now it's just a sob story when I actually am still uh still the same old me, still have a laugh. Um and I want to come across like that. I am still funny um, and still positive. Um, I deal with a lot of setbacks, but I'm always bouncing back yeah. and uh, becoming resilient, just like my mum. Yeah. So what, what does thriving mean to you, Ryan? Just um, coming off uh, in a positive way, coming off... To, um, being proud of myself, being happy, because there's no point in just doing it for sure. You need to generally be happy and content within yourself um, and making good, positive moves, right decisions, um, educate yourself, keep getting better and better, and um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah. Um you can t take t take breaks. I don't need to keep trying. Uh, I try sometimes to be the best every day of every minute, but uh, sometimes it's all right just to chill and yeah. uh, do nothing. Uh, don't put much, too much pressure. Yeah. So what what do you think gets in, in the way of, of us thriving? Just life, setbacks, um we're all we're all gonna deal with um negativity, bad stuff happen to your life, someone passing away, a break a relationship breakdown. It's it's how you deal with it, um, how you accept it. Um you're allowed to grieve. Say for instance, one uh, if a relationship breaks down, one person could be really upset uh and very, very angry. And then they never speak to each other again. And then another relationship breaks down and they're still friends. And um, that could be even for like partners or family or uh, other friends. And then some relationships where it breaks down, they're enemies, and then they become friends again. And I'm just trying, we're just trying to sp uh, skip that part of being enemies and just uh, yeah. <laughs> stay friends if it's possible. Um, anything's possible. So uh, we just need to learn to cope with that. Yeah. Be more more mature. mature. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that all comes in time, doesn't it? Yeah. So l looking back, you've it's um, you're 33 now. You found out that you were. Um, adopted just before you're 18 what have been your biggest kind of moments of uh, insight into all the stuff that we're talking about 
now what what's happened what's happened that's led you to this to these insights um my journey of trying to search for my family so um there's so many layers to my adoption being transracial being transnational being an orphan uh finding out late not telling anyone um and <clears throat> dealing with a lot a lot of negativity and tr try to find my search it's a needle in the haystack I'm uh, been on TV in Morocco in two stations, just trying to be relentless and try to look for my family, and it's I'm getting um no luck, but I'm just taking it on the chin, and while I'm over there, I'm making lots of friends, and um that's my attitude. If I don't find any family with my search, then look at all the friends I've made. And look at all the people I've connected with. Um, and that's by me um, being relentless. So a story was, when I was in Morocco for the second time, you're the first person, I was in January. I was in, I get, I was in, in June, no, sorry, yeah, June uh, 2022. And I was there January 2023. I've got my story in, in Arabic. And I was showing it to everyone um, that's on the train on a bus, in a cafe, in the hotel. People were telling me, be careful. Um, there's a guy from the UK tell, look, search for family, they think they want money. And from that, I managed to meet the doctor that looked after me. Story was, I was in a shop, s said to the 16-year-old kid, here's my story, can you help me? The guy went, I know the where, where the doctor was, works. And he said, and I was buying some clothes. I went, I'll buy clothes off you, you tell me where he lives. Came to a little deal. And then I found out his shop and I met the doctor and uh, he said he remembered me from 32 years ago. Wow. And um, I felt like I was in a movie, just wandering the streets, showing everyone my story. Um, and it was, uh, that's my relentless attitude. And then making lots of friends, jumping on people's motorbikes and driving around the, the city, giving them, uh, just networking with people. Yeah, that's what that's what I enjoyed, and um, I will be returning again this year. And um, I get messages from people uh, to say it was very brave of me to search, and um, I also get messages. I've also received comments like, "There's no point. What are you doing? Get on with your life." Um, and. I can see where both I can see both comments. I can understand, but this is if they if people need to understand how passionate I am about this, and if I'm passionate about me about it, let let me be and support me. <laughs> and and you know what gives people the the you know what what people what people think gives them the right to pass that sort of comment on. On, on, Wait, on somebody else, it's uh, if, no, it's, no, um, I, no. That that's what I thought. I, my thought was, how dare you say that? I'm struggling in life. These are people who are close to me. Um, how dare you say that? I'm struggling in life. I need as much support as help as possible. And you say comments like that, and that. But really, they are. I think they are just doing it because they care, and they want to to avoid. Um, disappointment but I'm optimistic I'm I don't know I'm a bit, little bit crazy but I'll just be like Do you know what there's there's a chance I, um, I could find something if that's if there's 1% chance or even whatever percent I'm going for it and um, the, the, so the, they're the negative comments positive ones people says Ryan that's amazing and um, but it is, like when a TV programs in the UK say, Ryan, your your search is too hard, um, we can't help you, because lots of people give off the suggestions. Yeah, you want to try this, try that. I've done it. I've done most of it. Um, my job's very difficult, and yet I'm still thriving. I'm still uh, trying, and I'm like when I go to Morocco, it's a soul searching journey. But I'm sitting there enjoying myself, speaking to the locals, trying the food. Enjoying the sun, yeah. uh, jumping on quad bikes and uh, doing the tourist stuff. 
So yeah. uh, I'm I'm enjoying myself while soul searching, and yeah, and who know who knows how long this journey is going to be. But um, uh, sometimes you're scared, and sometimes I'm excited for it. Yeah. So how how would you how would you sum up your expectations about this? Basically, you just you need to be okay with every situation. If I find family, a cousin, obviously mum and dad, fantastic. Even if I find a cousin, I'm delighted. There's a part, if you think, put yourself in my shoes, I don't know anyone in this world whose blood related to me, um, unless you count a third cousin from the DNA sites. Um, so if people can understand that, then that might may, may, make them think. But on the, on the flip side, um, if I don't find anything, then at least I've tried. And um, yeah, I could still continue with life, living in Scotland, traveling, going to Morocco every now and again. I built up a big network and uh, it's nice to see some, these people were strangers and now they've got my back. There's one person from the DNA site, he's my one of my highest matches. He's helped me so much with the translation because obviously they speak Arabic in Morocco, um, and he's he's helped me so much. And I'm maybe going to visit him in America, and um, in the next few weeks. And uh, I just want to show how much uh, I'm grateful for all his help. And he's his attitude is your family. Yeah. Uh, so so that's there's a story of hope that all these strangers are helping me. And um, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. So then yeah. also, and I would help anyone else, anyone, um, with what they're going through. And then I hope, let's hope everyone helps everyone else, everyone each other. Yeah. Did um, did you get any leads from the doctor? So I've got this illness called Bechet's, and that's in the UK. One in every fifty thousand got it. And and he knows it in Mor uh, Morocco. And the last patient he had was a year ago, so it's likely if anyone's got that illness, they might be related to me. And this illness is is quite it's uh, can affect my. I have to go to the eye provo uh, the eye hospital every six months because it affects my eyesight. It, it's just an immuno immune system, like I can be. Worn out sometimes, tired. Um, I can I can affect my joints. Um, so it's it's a I'm at a disadvantage. So it can and it obviously causes depression. And I'm on lifetime lifelong medication, and um, it's annoying. But as in the word of Simon, I'm thriving. I'm still <laughs> I'm still uh, yeah. I've got this illness. And as all, and as only, I've got it really, really low. There's people who have, uh, I've lost a little bit of vision in my left eye, but um, there's people who have had it much worse. And there's people out there who have had much worse illnesses. So um, it's it's not all bad. Um, if I need to take medication for the rest of my life, then so be it. If it keeps me alive, uh, so be it. Um, if they might find a cure. It might go away randomly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not educated in that. But um, yeah, it's it's uh, one point in my life it really annoyed me. But when I matured, it's I'm able to deal with it better. Yeah. So he he the doctor obviously remembers you. Does he remember your your mum as well? Yeah, he remembers everyone. Yeah, he remembers everyone. And um, but he hasn't got. He never had a name. He, he didn't get any paperwork or name for or anything like that. No, in Morocco, um, um, there was no name on anything. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's hidden secrets in the documents, uh, the paperwork, and uh, it's actually with the lawyers at the moment. So I'm playing a waiting game, um, which I'm playing a waiting game with a lot of things in life. Um, number one is the NHS trying to get counselling. Uh, I think I've got ADHD, so I'm one of been on the waiting list three and a half years I think it's four or five years um, 
waiting for the lawyers to get back to me to see if they can find anything. Um, I'm waiting for the doctor to find someone with the same illness with me. Um, yeah, and when I was in Morocco, it's a lot of false hope. Some people will go, well, I know who your mum is. And it turns out to be a, a dead end. So it's, it's like a, I'm being like an investigator. Uh, if I had the money, I'd buy a private investigator and see what see what he could find out. But um, it's very difficult um, because we're in different countries and stuff. Um, I get very frustrated that um, um, every day I'm not there is a day not looking. But um, just got to be patient and uh, see what happens. Yeah. Fantastic, buddy. Um, so I'm just conscious of time. Is there anything that you'd like to share that I've not asked you about, right? Um, just what I've been up to, really. I have uh, do lots of workshops. Um, I go to as many Zooms and uh, support chats, uh, support groups regarding adoption. So any adoptees out there, um, I know a lot of groups um, and I'm be willing to share that information. Um, I go to lots of uh, meals in Edinburgh, where it's for, for the homeless, and uh, I sit and chat with chat with them all, um, and you know what I mean, try and just make them feel that little bit better, um, spread spread good energy, and uh, yeah, just try and try to do as many opportunities as I can. Yeah. On top of trying to search for my family and enjoy yeah. life. Yeah. I like to party um, and uh, I like to have a laugh. Uh, I'm always, I love going to loads of events and festivals and stuff. Um, and I'll, what I also like to do is share that information. So I'm like, now, in, in a way, I'm looking for friends and I'm also trying to help others. Being like, guys, you know this is on. And... Uh, yeah, just try and try and bring as much fun for everyone. So, where where can people find out more of, about you and get in touch with you if they want, Ryan? Yeah, I'm just on Facebook and on Instagram. Right. So, uh, I can give you that information. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're we'll Ryan Anderson on Facebook and Pesci thirty seven on Instagram, and uh, <clears throat> I feel that. Um, if you want to read any of my blogs, my podcasts, um, my written story, or my video, the links are there. Um, it helps some people. It might help you. And um, That's I'm happy. I'll, I'm happy to chat to anyone and every, everyone and anyone who wants to talk. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I can. I can talk as well. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't know. If I'm just, <laughs> I don't know if I'm just waffling a load of crap, but. Yeah. Uh, Good hopefully, you. hopefully, I've came across in a, in a good way. Yeah, and um, it's good to say that I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um. So, good vibes. Good vibes. Right, buddy. Thanks a lot, and thank you to uh, thank you, thank you to listeners. We will speak to you again very soon. Take care. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Take it easy. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye.